Hi, welcome to Truth to Tal and Isaac. I'm Tal. I'm Isaac. Episode number 67 coming at you tonight. Congratulations, Steph Curry, Finals MVP. Good job, man. Awesome. Good job, Steph. Prop, props to uh, the chef. Uh, obviously, huge NBA championship. We're talking about the uh, championship, NBA draft, and a little bit of Tiger talk and some Tiger experiences today. Yeah, lots of lots of lots of interesting basketball storylines. Oh, lines. so much interesting basketball. Do you have, okay? Do your off the tops. Off the top, okay. okay. Deshaun Watson, he, like he's so bad. Just Deshaun. He, Deshaun, he he needs to be suspended for two years. Well, that's what I read. The report was. Oh, did you? The NFL wants a long suspension. They won't do two years. The longest suspension is a game, or sorry, a, a season, a whole season. How long was Michael Vick suspended for? For yeah, like four like games, fighting like not, dogs. No, it was a long time. He, he served some prison time too, right? Yeah, it was. Terrible. That's the difference. Watson might not serve prison time, but that's goofy law stuff that I can't. I'm not smart enough to understand. Yeah, that's okay. We'll get a lawyer on the show. Oh, that's Daredevil. a good idea. Or a real Daredevil. one, or a real lawyer. A real one. Like okay. we get, you know, Nancy Jamu or sure. Mayor Jokins is a lawyer. Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Captain Steve, right? Steve Roberts. Oh yeah, we can get him too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. He's going to write this down to add to our list of that's guests, which we yeah. haven't dipped into a ton, but yeah, we will. We're, we're getting them lined up. Actually. And Big T wants to get on the show. Theo? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, well, he wants to boost his viewers for his channel as well. Oh, that's fine. A little yeah, bit of cross-marketing. This is my nine-year-old. How old is he? Nine? Uh, nine. I think he'll be uh, double digits in September. Yeah, my nine-year-old cousin. Okay. Uh, golf, we're going to talk for a minute. I know we don't have a lot of golf fans, but it's like the USFL is trying to take over the NFL. I learned a bit We've about this. We've got this Live Golf League, which is basically... Backed by Saudi billionaires yeah. and a bunch of asses that have sold out for a little bit of money. Actually, no, it's a lot of money. It's like two hundred million. Yeah, to go big offers and just admit it. Say, you know, I really don't care about anything else. I want to make a lot of money on golf, and I don't care about legacy of the sport. Really. I just want to have my great grandchildren to make sure they never have to work a day in their life. Great, 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 doing. great grandchildren. Pretty much, it's generational. Work. Yeah. So I was talking to some guys on Friday about this that were educating me, basically. Mm-hmm. You've got a league, and then you've got this new kind of fake league that's just throwing a bunch of kind of sketchy money at dudes and some well, big it's, name it's, guys. It's oil money. It's not sketchy. It's just okay, the that, people was, who run it are sketchy because yeah. they like kill people. So yeah, like there's how the sketchiness oh, yeah, ties yeah. in. Yeah. Um, and then some big name guys, right? Like Mickelson, Dustin Johnson. Oh, but yeah. Is Bryson DeChambeau thinking about it? Like, He's done it already. Who's thinking? Brooks is thinking. Shem- Shambo. DeChambeau. No, Brooks won't do it because Brooks is anti. Uh, there was the someone, shambles. someone big that was on the the fence. Like they're getting guys there, uh, which is just not good for the sport, from my understanding. No. Nope. So all six golf fans, including the one next to me, are really upset by this. Yeah, I'm upset about it. Um, so are the other five, but no yeah. one cares. St. George's Golf and Country Club showed well for the Canadian Open. Now it's the U.S. Open this week, so it'll be cool. Oh, there's a lot of lot of stories I saw. A lot of people were there from like Windsor. Yep. Way to represent. Good job, everybody. Good job, Windsor. Spitfires. Hey, uh, we went to Game Six. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, it was a great win, Game 6, but unfortunately they lost to the Bulldogs in Game 7. Good job, Fitz. Are they the Bulldogs? I think so. That's a stupid hockey team name. Yeah. They probably started in 1912, since they didn't okay. have a lot of options out there. The internet wasn't so good. Need to give another shout-out to Bill Simmons. You'll probably be back on the Bill Simmons bandwagon now that it's over. Yeah, I'm still listening. Watchables, or sorry, rewatchables, Hard to Kill. Uh, I listened to a good amount of it this morning. Kevin uh, prepped it up and said it was so good, and it's... Awesome. You should also listen to our podcast too. Yeah. Oh, a little, again, cross promotion stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Bill will promote us sometime. Yeah. When I'm working for him. Uh, NFL training camps are starting to happen, and way too much time is going to be spent on backup quarterbacks and like the fifth and sixth wide receivers. Makes no difference how many games you're going to win. You need a good quarterback, offensive line, skill guys. Uh, the Tigers, sorry, the Lions really don't have a good quarterback. And their defense is going to be one of the worst in the NFL again. I think too much time of training camp stuff is going to X player didn't attend training camp. The, mand- the mandatory, the optional stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Rodgers, I don't expect him to go to anything that he's not getting paid to do. I agree. Like, I just... No, but I, I don't think it's optional training camp. I think it's mandatory. Yeah, there was some stuff. optional stuff that we were reading about in the past, which I just don't... I don't care. Yeah. Any more off-the-top stuff or you want to jump right into the NBA Finals? I have an off-the-top thing. Go nuts. Porta potties. Technology has evolved so much in the past five years, ten years, fifty years, hundred years. Oh my god! Yeah. How are we still at porta potties? I'm I'm being serious. Yeah. You think it's stupid? No, we're pooping in a plastic box 
into a bin of gray murkiness. Or so green we haven't. I you didn't know I was bringing this up. No. I had I had recently. I had two porta potty experiences, different occasions, a week apart. They were both awful. Uh, I didn't expect them to be good, but they were terrible. Like walking into a spider web, just awful. Uh, I don't know how we don't have anything better. I don't. I don't have Society a solution. Society should have evolved. But we've done so much. There's like, so m- you can poop in space somehow. Couldn't you do it? Like I just don't understand how we've done all this cool stuff and we've got whatever. There's like, hoverboards, like real hoverboards. There's electronic the future. jerseys that change names and numbers and all this, but we still poop in a bin and share it with people. Yeah. Just don't understand. Wanted to put that. And out every there. couple of weeks, somebody comes by and cleans out the green murkiness. And or I, you maybe know what? Not. I probably want some fans with this because I know I don't have many. I appreciate the Team Isaac fans. There's not. There's only a few of us. Thank you guys. So for those listening. people that like porta potties, will oh, jump the, on the team town nation. The pro porta potty. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just lost. to be really clear, I'm not on the pro porta potty. This isn't like this guns. Is po- or this is no getting guns. getting so political. I you know, was, I, I heard the Republicans are big supporters of porta potties and don't take away their porta potties. Okay, Saturday Night Live. It's third Third Amendment. <laughs> it's my my right. It's my, my body, right my choice. To my toilet, my choice. Yeah. So let's go into basketball. I have no other porta potty discussions. Okay. So NBA, after game three, it did look like the Warriors were in trouble. We still kept on the Warrior bandwagon because we had faith in them. The Warriors just wore down the Celtics, right? It was just too hard to guard after having to go through a, a tough road. The guy who wore them down the most, Steph Curry, right? Very hard to defend. And I think they just couldn't keep up. With all that Golden State does in offense and all the magic that Steph Curry brings. Right? Lots of magic. I think he's taking a picture, so I'll just keep talking about it. I mean, everybody's talking about Game 6 and the win, but I think it's very important that we talk about how monumental a Game 4 win was with Steph. Those 43 points were amazing. He was hitting unbelievable shots, taking guys to the rack. So good. Are we, okay, keep going. Second shout out, and we'll do lots of points here. No, actually, let's just do all our Curry stuff now. Okay. Because we really like Steph Curry, and we're going to talk a lot about him. Curry, Curry, Curry. So let's... First, I'm just going to put a fact out there. LeBron James traded Andrew Wiggins to then go on to lose three out of four finals to the Golden State Warriors. Correct? That's a fact? Essentially, yeah. It's a fact. Yep. Steph Curry accepted Andrew Wiggins to his team. Fact. Yep. Got him a ring. Fact. The same year LeBron missed the plan with five Hall of Famers in addition to himself. That's fact. a fact. Yep. I just wanted to put that out there. It's enough. So about that, LeBron. So about that, LeBron. <laughs> Spit. So, Steph Curry. He has as many championships as LeBron in six fewer seasons, which is just fascinating because you never think about how That's many championships Steph has. He has yep. four now. He's got four. That's like four an chips. elite group. And they are now the number one uh, betting favorites to win the championship next year. Do you know that? Are they like five and a half to one? Uh, Something like that? Not five and a half to one, I don't think. Like plus 500, plus 550 yes, in that yeah, range. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we might as well. High stakes gambler. I put down 20 bucks on Golden State when they were down 14-2 in game six. Returned $64. So nice. I was, it was awesome. Big, I, yeah. big win. So thanks, Steph Curry. Is that Canadian funds or US funds? That was Canadian funds. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, and also, Steph didn't switch teams three times to get his rings. If you guys didn't know, Golden State drafted him. You know, the, the cool thing about Steph is... People don't realize how much he evolved, and he evolved in three ways. One, he obviously got stronger, so that made him a much better defensive player. And during the key times of this series, he wreaked havoc on the offensive and defensive ends, right? Lots of strips, not getting back down. Very active he, he hands. Did a great, very active hands. Great he in the al- passing lane. Yeah, he also evolved. Man, he's an unbelievably good finisher. Right. And that mid range floater game, right? He could always hit mid range jump shots, but best three point shooter in history. Fact. One of the better finishers around the rim this year. Like, I don't remember the stats, but he's a really, really good finisher. I think he's like, he's not on Kyrie's level, but yeah. I think he's in and that conversation. That whole mid range floater deal, like, so dude, difficult. Dude, to when stop. he pulls up from 15 foot and does a one foot floater, like, it's just an impossible shot to defend. Like, a high screen and roll or a little shovel from Draymond, yeah. and he just jacks it up with one hand. Because what. You're you're backing down because you assume he's going to go to the rim, either hand do a scoop shot. or um, yeah, the little scoop shot close to the rim, so he can finish either hand high off glass, a little scoop shot. So you cannot possibly defend the floater. The only way you're going to defend the floater is one of the guys who's guarding Clay or Pool off the three point land has to come in and be the third guy giving attention to him. His guy, 
the screen guy, and it would be a third guy who's coming off of Clay to defend it. You just can't do that. The amount of basketball that Golden State plays that's four on three and three on two is unbelievable. And yeah. I don't I have not seen anything like it ever because the amount of overplays and doubles that Steph gets at the top of the key that creates wide open pool looks, wide open dump passes to Looney to finish it like that. You know, I think it was the bucket that kind of sealed the game five win where Draymond had it and kind of bounced it right to Looney and then yep. Looney went up on the left side of the backboard. Uh, that was all Steph Curry. Yep. They all overplayed. They blitzed Steph. It allows Draymond to open up and he's got like, you know, six feet of separation from the hoop. He can either jack up a brick or dump it to Looney, dump it to Looney. Speaking of Draymond Green, shot out of a cannon in game six, right? <laughs> awful, hitting, awful, awful, awful. Hitting big shots. 12-12, 18-2. Like that two. big, uh, you know, like 18, 19 foot jumper with the uh, shot clock running five. down. Like, what are they doing? Oh, they're just giving it to Green. To so like I had a very somebody. good finals viewing experience because I watched a good bit home with you. I watched some with Ace Boston, Boston Celtics fans. And yep. then I watched some with neutral, <laughs> neutral fans, some LeBron fans, some big Warriors guys, some so better. Evan's, Evan's a big LeBron fan. I didn't watch with Evan respectfully. Oh. Uh, but Evan would have been pro. But he's not anti-Golden State, I don't think. Okay. I don't think he's that dumb. Um, I also watched with Jake Goldman. Shout out Jake. He's oh, a big hey, better. He was kind of my bookie. He was hammering Andrew Wiggins' double-double. So we were really rooting for rebounds. Kind of got some people involved whenever he got like his third rebound in the first quarter. The second quarter, we just kind of <laughs> go nuts. He didn't get 10 boards. So it was underwhelming, but I think he bet on Golden State. Got, he, did he get nine? No, he got like seven, six. Oh, too bad. Yeah. Um, so I had a really good finals experience, like watching with a lot of different people. Good. Uh, Mike Breen. Shout out Mike Breen. He's just awesome. He's the, the the color guy, the play by play guy. Oh, he's good. Yeah, who's great. Uh, so that's what I have. That's not basketball related. And so, then I've got some more stuff. Keep okay, going. so here's the question about Steph. Okay, is he now top ten all time? I think I can say yes. Okay, so let's just kind of go through this real quick. We're not going to debate these guys. We're not going to debate Jordan, Kareem, LeBron, Magic, Bird, Wilt, and Russell. So Russ, so I have, I'm with you there. I think the Russell Steph is a conversation to be had. It's an extremely difficult one because it's literally opposite, completely opposite, opposite styles of play, opposite eras. I, I'd like to put those people in the. I don't think it's a topic of discussion. I think Bill Russell. It can be. Maybe it's a brief discussion. Okay. It's a little semantic here. So now we're in the Shaq, Kobe, Tim Duncan, Hakeem. So yeah. Steph is in that. We tier. didn't. We didn't share notes. I'm. I'm rocking with you so far here. Okay. So, I've always thought that Kobe's a little bit overrated. But then I looked into him a little bit. Yes, he high usage guy. He was a tremendous defensive player. Like, he was nine-time first-team all-defensive. Now, how much of that was tied to his offensive? I don't know. So I don't nine, think that much. He was a great defender. Tim Duncan, obviously, big fundamental. Lots of championships. Great player. Very fundamentally sound. Just prior to like outside shots. So he didn't really shoot a lot of jumpers. He just hit everything close to the rim. Uh, lots of moves. And then you got a couple of big guys that were uh, amazing. Hakeem the Dream and Shaq. So as much as I love Hakeem, I'm, I'm putting him behind all those guys. So Hakeem, I'm crossing out. Crossing out meaning Steph is not on Hakeem's level? No, nope. Steph's a little bit ahead of Akeem. I can respect that. So now we've got Shaq, Kobe, Tim Duncan. You want to include Russell? I do not want to include Russell. I, I will put Steph ahead of Hakeem. I think I'm going to put him ahead of Tim Duncan. Okay. Because I'm a Kobe over Duncan guy. I think they're super close, but I put Kobe ahead of Duncan. And I'm not one of these morons that's my age that overrates Kobe, which respectfully is pretty much everybody. Yeah. And oh, I people who, who talk Kobe top five, it is in debate. Kobe is... Eight, nine, ten in that range. And I've always kind of been like kind of maybe in the seven, six area, but okay. I don't think he touches Larry or Magic, and those are the guys kind of right in the tier ahead of him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I agree. I, I'm going to put Steph ahead of Hakeem. I'm going to put ahead of Duncan. I don't think I put him on Shaq, Kobe, or Russell. Okay, let's still put Steph at 10. Is that Steph 10 here? Yep. One, and Tim two, Duncan's three, 11. Five, six, seven. Yeah, I can't really count right now, but yeah, that's I okay. think – so I have Steph – is he 10? We have him here? Yep. So just shout out to Top Gun for a second. Uh, oh. This is how vested we are on Top 10 for those people that are choosing not to watch us and choosing to listen, which is perfectly acceptable form yeah. of being we a true supporter. Respect. Isaac went uh, all in and got like the big time aviators from Ray-Ban. Um, 
Let's just say they might be slight knockoffs, but are hard to tell. Are we allowed to say that? They're, like, I don't think I broke a law. No, you just ordered them from China and like small children made them and oh, pretty I... much you're supporting that type of child labor. But that's okay. That's your choice. These, so yeah, on YouTube, I, I'm not Daniel Russo hiding like a cut on my eye or anything. Like I'm just wearing the wearing the aviators for Maverick because Top Gun is sick. Uh, yeah, they're, I think they're about 15 bucks uh, and they're awesome. Okay, so, good deal. Thank you. Thank you, Chinese children, for making my glasses. Yep. Okay, let's get into some more NBA Finals talk. Uh huh. Credit to Steve Kerr. Like, obviously, the whole bench and dream on green for a little while. Balls. Big news. But he just seemed to make all the right moves, being in Belize for a few minutes and Iggy. And he, he just seemed to make the right moves. And I, I, I know he's a great coach, and I know he gets a lot of hype. I don't think he gets as much hype as he should. I think he does. I think he gets Do a you? lot. Of, I saw a lot of, oh, is my gosh, a- look how many rings he Do- has. Now... You keep going, and then I'm going to mention uh, someone that we haven't talked about yet. Get, get a few other good points. Yeah. So Clay did not have the best series, but Clay is a beast. Like he had his legs torn apart twice, and he came back and he played in the NBA Finals, and he made a difference. Yeah, did he miss some shots? Yeah, he had a couple is really he, good games. Yeah, is he now a, a lockdown defender? No, but guess what? He's going to be better next year. He showed spurts of excellent defense. Yeah, and I think it he helps did. when Jalen Brown can't dribble. Yes, it does. Like it, it helps to play defense if the guy yep. you're guarding can't dribble. Do you have anything else? Because I'm I have to spend a minute on a good friend of mine. Uh, you go. So, are you familiar with the classic novel and film, The Invisible Man? Yes, I is am. it H.G. Wells? Yeah. Okay. Well, they remade it a couple years ago. It's not very good, but that's not the point. It felt like they remade it during the finals because I had a really hard time finding Jason Tatum. So I think Jason Tatum, his new nickname is the Invisible Man. Okay, I'm just I'm gonna go off here. Look, go nuts. I don't like Rodgers. He made it really easy for, easy for me to crap on him the past couple years in the playoffs. I don't like LeBron. It's easy to crap on him with what he's done the past couple years. Tatum made my job so easy. He just disappeared. Look, people were quick to dub Tatum the man. He earned some respect from me. Because of the Brooklyn oh, series? Against Milwaukee? Oh my god, he came up huge. The Milwaukee series and 46 Brooklyn. 46 points or something? Or? And then, you know, if I look at it with my aviators on, well, that Brooklyn series might have been, a, I don't want to say fluky, but it might have been a little hokey with how KD just kind of, he was an invisible man, but he had some stretches where it's like, why are you throwing it in the fourth row? Right? Then, obviously, the Milwaukee series is there was no Middleton. I think if the Bucks were healthy, they beat the Celtics in five or six. And then I think they probably go on to beat the Heat. I agree with you. Uh, and I, I do agree with like, you. I, I think the Bucs, it, it, it doesn't matter. Golden State Warriors are the champions, and that's part of oh, being I'm, a champion. No, I'm not crapping the Warriors. Yeah. I'm crapping the the the, Buc- or the Celtics right now. Okay, yep. So Tatum, in the second half of Game 5, he had four air balls. Like, jump shots that were short by a foot. Some of them didn't touch anything. A lot of them didn't. Just super goofy, and I don't buy the shoulder stuff because Boston people don't buy the yeah. shoulder stuff. I listened to Simmons talk about this. And he picked them up. Yeah, Same. so he picked up Brown uh, when he fell to the floor in like the first quarter or whatever. And if his shoulder was injured, he wouldn't have done that. Now, is he tired? Yeah, he probably is tired and worn down physically and mentally. We said this all along. Tatum has a top five game. I don't know if he has a top five mentality at this point he can choose to learn and get better right Isaiah Thomas got the crap kicked out of him by Boston a couple of years he threw the pass that got intercepted we don't that, talk about that yeah we don't really talk about that that's one of the reasons why we hate Boston but Isaiah Thomas got mean and he got better well you can right? do this with a lot Jordan of, got yeah. mean and got better from the Pistons Giannis yep what's gonna happen to Tatum I don't know it'll be very interesting because it happens less now just because superstars are so coddled so I have some Tatum stats in front of me. I don't have a lot uh, just because I, I don't need statistics to prove my point. I think a lot of people agree with me here, mm-hmm. except some blinded Tatum, Duke, Celtic people. He had the most turnovers in a single playoff run in NBA history. 100. After game four or five, he hit that point, and then he just kept turning the ball over, right? Like he Did he finish with 100 on the dot? It was 100, 101, 102. I, I don't remember. Lots of turnovers. And look, obviously he had a big role, and I get that, and he's tired. I get that. I think Steph Curry's pretty tired. He ran about 25 miles a game. Like, the amount of running that he does, and it's not like Tatum was checking him. Yep. Speaking of checking Curry, Ime Odoka, I like you. Why are we willingly switching on Horford to Curry in Game 6 of the Finals? 
What am I missing? I, I don't know. I think they just got out. They they got out worked. They got out coached. I don't. Yeah, they def- definitely did. I just don't understand the like. Okay, Smart's gonna check Curry, and then they give him a high ball screen, and then they're gonna just willingly leave, give it up. No willingly say, I want Horford on Curry Island, and Curry's either gonna get to the right handed block, and he's gonna finish with a scoop shot, or he's just gonna hit a step back and shake him. Like it's just awful. You either put two on him, or you have to fight through these screens harder. I just don't understand why we're putting Horford, who I'm a big fan of, on Curry. Yep, a couple other points. Here's the deal. Boston does not have a true point guard. Smart is not a true point guard. So, oh, I need a point guard. Well, guess what? They had a couple of point guards. Kemba, Kyrie, and it went terribly for them. Isaiah Thomas. So, so yeah, Isaiah Thomas. I mean, he's too little. But uh, you can't bash on Smart too much because he was asked to do a lot more than he should have. And his game has evolved. He's a better ball handler than he used to be, a much better shooter than he used to he's be. a good passer. And he's a pretty good passer. Tatum needed to be their primary ball handler. Not Brown. Brown can't dribble, right? He's an NBA star who is unable to dribble. If they had a really good backup point guard, like a healthy Rajon Rondo or something like that, mm. which is actually funny because I didn't even realize that he was... What about Corey Joseph? Uh, no, he's not good enough. Well, please, all we ask is like Rob Will in a first. That's it. Like, that's all we want. No Skillian Hayes? Oh, actually, you know what? That kind of works. I would love to give Killian. They would turn on him in a second. Boston fans. Uh, so you talk about smart offensively. Defense player of the year looks as fraudulent as ever. Yes. If we everybody the, realizes that was just a poor decision. Even Boston people are like, yeah, like there's three other people on Boston that probably deserved it over him. Uh, yep. Williams, Horford are two great defensive players. Horford's a little limited. Rob will Rob will actually just quite good on guards. Uh, Brown is very good defensively. Tatum, when he's engaged, very good defensively. Yep. Derek White, who I don't like, is good defensively. That's okay, because his offensive game really dried up the last few games of the series. The I just want to play a quick game. Blank jerseys. So if we were watching the game, and there's no names or numbers on the jerseys, and we just watched the game, and you were to say, hey, see that guy? He is defensive player of the year. And you point at Marcus Smart, and like, no, it's that guy. That's Andrew Wiggins. You would point at Andrew Wiggins Correct. if you watch the series, and yep. we got to shout out Maple Jordan. Uh, that's his nickname, Maple Jordan. Great nickname. Uh, we have to shout him out because he was great defensively, uh, and he just grinded, and he was a different player. Offensively, like when he started to take the ball to the rack, I'm like, bucket. 50-inch 50, 50 vert. Like, bucket. he's so good around the rim. Bucket. Yeah. So, I think the blank jerseys thing, and then it, there's stretches where if I didn't, if Tatum didn't have a jersey on, I'd be like, who is that? Like, slightly lankier uh, Grant Williams, or is it like a bigger Derek White? Because there was long stretches of all of the games in crunch time where he was standing on the the, the, line, hiding on the left wing or in the corner, not moving, not setting screens, not engaged. Not taking the ball to the rack at all, almost afraid of contact. There's a couple times where he had wide open looks in game six and just pumped to pass out. There was one where he pumped, traveled, and it was just it was a wide open shot in the corner. So I just it's fascinating how Tatum disappeared. Entertaining series. Thanks, Golden State. Fun watch. Also, uh, Gary Payton. We really like Gary Payton. Oh, we like I really Gary ho- I, I think he's yeah. uh, some sort of free agent. Restricted he- team option. Unre- I just hope he stays in Golden State because I don't want him in the Eastern Conference. No, he's almost like Homie. Right? Athletic, good, good defender. Okay. Um, Anything else? We want, we want to talk about the draft? Yeah. Okay. So what happened is at, at this point, there appears to be four solid players, right? The three bigs. Smith, Chet, Paulo, and then Ivy is the fourth player. Well, this is going to work where it gets interesting. Sacramento is scheduled to pick fourth. They're already a guard-heavy team. And Ivy has said he does not want to play in Sacramento. He hasn't stated, but that's the like that's the headline report. Pretty, pretty close. So this leaves the Piston with Shaden Sharp, Keegan Murray, Dyson Daniels, guys like that. Do you just let it happen? Or do you try and give up some capital or a player... To go get Ivy at four. So I see four realistic options that the Pistons have at five. In terms of fifth fifth overall, I'm on the board. Ivy, Keegan Murray, Shaden Sharp, Benedict Matherin. Those are the guys that are in play at five. Then there's the AJ Griffin, who I actually like. Johnny Davis, who I do not, don't like. Dyson Daniels, who I kind of like. Yeah. Jalen Duran, the big, who I like. Those are kind of reaches if they pick mm-hmm. them at five. They're more in like the back end of the lottery towards ten kind of. Uh, I want Ivy at five. I want Ivy. I had a. I, I do like Sharp a lot. I really like Matherin. I think Matherin actually might be my second. Like, let's say Ivy goes four. 
I think I want Matherin at five. I certainly ahead of Ivy. No, no, no. I said Ivy goes four. Oh, Ivy goes four. Ivy goes four. I want Matherin over Murray. Certainly, I do not like Keegan Murray. Sharp, Daniels, all those guys. And I, I actually, I like Sharp. There's a stretch where I kind of like. I, I still am in on Sharp, but it's a little scary. Mm-hmm. But I would rather take a, a shot on Sharp than on Murray, right? I know exactly. Keegan Murray's comp is like Otto Porter Jr. and Kuzma. Fifth overall, I don't really want that. Uh, obviously, Jaden Ivey, his comp is like he's D Mitch. Like it's a lot of D Mitch in his game. Sharp doesn't have a comp really because. No one's watching play. Nobody knows. Kind of Levine esque. I heard Brandon Roy thrown around. Uh, I heard a, a Who's smaller. Who's the guy who played high school basketball with grade nine, grade ten? It was really good. I. Come on. On my when... Goldo. Yeah, Goldo. He's yeah, like yeah. Goldo. Oh, like just mysterious. Okay. You have no idea wh- wh- how sure. his game was going to translate. Goldo was like a point guard who could also play center. Could fly through the gym. Yeah, Goldo was very awesome. athletic. Super G. Super G. That was his nickname. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's that. We have no idea yeah. what's going to happen. Correct. I like Matherin a lot, right? He's a dog. I guess he's been awesome in his interviews from like, I've kind of listened to some NBA people. He's been awesome in interviews, just like tough, but not punk tough, just tough. Uh, same with, same with Ivy. Sharp is I guess, pretty quiet and closed off. Like it's really a mystery. Yeah, it's crazy. Keegan Murray, I think is a really good guy as well, actually. Front, like I've read a couple articles. There's a lot of good things about Keegan. You just don't like him. In, in the he's 22. He's so what? Like, you, I don't. You, I want. I want an eighteen. I'd, I'd rather have like a nineteen. I want a guy my age next okay. to Cade because that's like me. So they're first and Hami. So they give up five and Hami to move up a spot. No, I wouldn't. No, I'd I would, do that. I would not give up and like a solid guy. A rotation to go up one player. Spot. I, I I think you have to do that unless okay, mm. Killian. Yeah, you hate Killian. So <laughs> that's it. Um, Luca Garza. Yeah? Yeah. Come okay. on, man. Yeah. Who's the guy from Michigan? Oh, Livers? Stretch four. No, because Livers actually has been... He was great down the stretch last year. I know, but you're going to have to give up something to move up to get Ivy. Fine. Livers and five for Ivy. Okay. That, that would be... I, I think I would take that trade. It would be a little tough to swallow. Because awesome. of those guys that I mentioned, Livers and Hami, I like the best. Hey, Michigan. Jordan Poole. We didn't really talk about him. Way to play your role, Jordan. Oh, man. Way he to... was nothing. And then that's the, one of the other thing, fun things about Golden State is they had guys who just moved up. Okay, that's it. NBA draft, please. I, I'd like Ivy to be a piston. He wants to be a piston. We want him. He's a dog. Ivy is like the fastest dude on the court. Explosive, two level score. Doesn't really have a mid range, so he's two level. We'll great teach finisher. Him, we'll teach him that. Great three, great three pointer. Keegan Murray. Watch him for five minutes. It's not impressive. Like he's an he's okay. He's a very solid all around player. He's he, not a very he good is. athlete. He's like one of the things on him. One of his his like strengths was excellent cutter. Yeah, a fifth overall, I want a little more than an excellent cutter. And then one of them is good off the ball. Okay, I, what is that? He's good at standing eight, 18 feet and getting ready for a jumper. I just... I'm actually pretty good at that. I mean, I'm not, not good at the... No, standing 18 feet away and getting ready for a jumper? Yeah, like I'm going to be slow on the release and the jumper's probably going to be a brick or get blocked. But I'm good at standing ready for a jumper and I can cut because I can... So we should draft you. Time. We should draft you fifth overall. You're about Keegan's Mur- Keegan Murray's age. We're close to the age. Uh, yeah, and Mathur and I talked about... He's got a receding hairline. He actually does, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that's... I'm very nervous for the draft, but... Okay, me too. It's Super Thursday. nervous. Like, it's... Soon. It's a few days. That's why I yeah. kind of wanted to talk about this. Here's what we need. We need the Brown to Cunningham's Tatum. Right? I think Yes, Kate we is, do. Yeah, we need another star. And Kate is not... Tatum is... Uh, Kate is not as invisible as Tatum will be. But we just need a guy like who... A really good number two who can hopefully dribble a little more than Brown. Okay. So, Tigers. It's really easy to get a ticket. It's really easy to move up. The not, best, that, not that we move up. No, but Val and Isaiah do it a lot. No, let's be clear. You do it all the time with your buddies. Um, <laughs> the problem right now is the best player in the Tigers does not have an at-bat in the major leagues. Riley, t- okay, Riley Green Day is today. Today. It's Riley Green Day today. It's today. The Actually, second best player okay. in the Tigers? Is Miggy. Is Miggy. And then Harold Castro. Who, like, I guarantee you, like, let's, let's talk about... Miggy in a forty-yard, uh, dude. He runs like a, like an eight-eight. Right? He runs like me. Yeah, like I just. Again, like, yeah. I'm not very fast. I don't so, want to talk about the Tigers. The only Tigers I want to talk about is our experience at the. Why do you have a mask? I don't know. Just. <laughs> oh, I put that there in, in the suit jacket. Yeah, I put some yeah. stuff in there. Okay. Um, 
Look, the Tigers, <clears throat> Tigers suck. I guess I put the mask back just in case you're gonna steal this again. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have really good times. I've been to six games this year. Uh, I'm probably gonna go to no less than fifteen games. Like I'm gonna go to a lot. You're gonna come when you you, you want to. Yep, I come sometimes. Uh, I'm not spending much to get in. It was I so I've been to uh, six games. I went yesterday. It was a dog fight getting in. Because I go to these Friday 7 p.m. games, Saturday 4 10. Like, I go when I'm not working. Uh, and they are the premium games. And I tell the guys, like, there won't be a premium game for the Tigers for five years. And they're like, oh, man, it's premium. It's not premium. So I try to spend 20, 25 bucks. Um, we've gotten some good deals. It used to be $15 was the number. And now $20 is a good deal if you can get it for 20 bucks. I I scratched and and, and what's it? Clawed for yep. for twenty dollar tickets last night. First pitch had already happened. Oh, I got in bottom of the second. Okay. Yeah, I waited. I watched the game and kind of through a TV and fine. They're gonna like. I'll wait till the fourth inning if I'm gonna save five bucks. Like that's just kind of who. That's what you've raised. That's value. My buddies were like, Tudor, I'm just gonna go get box office for twenty seven dollars. That's a good deal, actually. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna save seven bucks. I'll miss. I'll miss a Robbie Grossman fly out. Like I'll just whatever. I'll He's live got with vertigo. it. Got vertigo. Oh no, just. Does... That's Meadows, I thought, Meadows right? Yeah. Um, the okay. I do anything else with the Tigers? I like going to games. We should do a post about how like I was on TV for a while. Yep. Yeah. Because that was pretty funny. Well, let's just throw that picture out there. Okay, like post it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I will post that. I will. I will do that. Uh, do you have anything Chris, else with the Tigers? Just Chris Illich foolishly said that the rebuild is over at the beginning of the year. That is not aging really well. How do you not fire Avila? Like I don't understand. They will, I think. I would think so. Like, I think you need to go to AJ and say, okay, AJ, what do you want? Do you want to be like the manager and the GM? Do you want to bring in a guy? Because I worry AJ's going to leave, right? That's the rumor. Oh, if AJ leaves, I am selling complete Tiger stock. And I'm like, okay, $10 is my price to get in. It's not $20. If AJ Hint leaves and everything kind of blows up, we're getting in for 10 bucks. I need to give their pitching staff credit right because they've done pretty decent considering it's chris fatter but they've got one of the worst offenses in history like baez scope Candyman, spencer torkelson tucker barnyard i know that's not his name but that's his nickname <laughs> okay. why did we take so long to come up with that nickname <laughs> he looks like he's from barnyard he which does. i think i'm allowed to say yeah um just that like the tigers have i don't know 31 home runs judge has judges six. about 28 or something something like that in the month of june the stats are awful i saw that like it's just they're really bad they have two homers in the month of june yeah they scored two runs this week two runs the past four games i believe right yeah that's bad one run in 35 innings or something stupid like yeah it's it's really tough but and some of the position players have like multiple appearances do you have anything else for the tigers I want them to be better. Oh, you're rape, dude. I Apologize. know. Say, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I just get fired up. Okay. Uh, I have something to... I have actually two things before we close off. Do you have anything? Yeah. We got a, like props to our trainer for counsel. It's a big deal. Shout out my boy. So officially, uh, the truth of Talon Isaac is supporting Lyndon Crane for his bid to be counselor for the town of Amherstburg. It's my buddy. It's my coworker. Yep. I've known him for years. I've known him forever. Um, he He's the guy, and we're going to support him. And if you believe in the future and fiscal responsibility and good things for the town of Famisburg, you're going to support Lyndon. Remember the name, Lyndon Crane. Yeah, he's hashtag Team Lyndon. Yeah, Team Lyndon. Uh, is, is that the hashtag? Uh, Crane for Council. Crane for Council. Or Craner for Council Craner is what for I'm council. doing. Got it. Okay, do you have anything else about the local political landscape? No. Okay. Two things really quickly. One... Hustle with Adam Sandler is one of the best sports movies. Have we not talked about this yet? No. Oh my God, it's all good. Like, it's one of the best sports movies ever. Yeah, it jumps right up to The Natural and... But I like it more than The Natural. I've seen it twice at this point. I like it more than The Natural. Super good. So I just want to say, a lot of people have seen that. Like, Hustle is getting a lot of clicks. And everybody I've taught... Dude, Hustle, so good! Like, everybody is... is all. I haven't heard one person that's okay. Yeah, if you don't like Hustle, don't talk to us. Just and it's don't. not even just like a basketball fan. Like if you like movies. No, it's an underdog flick. It's flick. Uh, just good. And total props to Bo Theo Cruz. Bo Cruz. Bo Cruz. Juancho Hernan Gomez, who's now skyrocketing on my favorite players list. Yeah. Watch Hustle on Netflix. Pistons should get him. But yeah. Oh, I would love that. That'd be so That'd be awesome. So, that'd be so cool. You just, ever, you just see Bo Cruz jerseys around Detroit. Yeah. You see Cunningham and that'd Cruz. Be, that'd be fun. Um, and this episode is going to be dropping on Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day, Tal. Good job. Uh, all the dads, listeners, 
Happy Father's Day. Good job, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Do you have anything else to say to our people? No, thanks for the props. Yeah, good job, dads. And also mothers, too. Just good just job, everybody. A good mother is, should be celebrated yeah. on Father's Day as well. Everybody, Just good job to everybody. Okay. So, so we make everyone happy. Peace out, everybody.